Okay, today we're going to do, can Christians seek medical uh, professionals? Are we able as Christians to go to a doctor? And this is one of the characteristics today uh, of the church, and the other one is diet. And people want to challenge faith, and challenge God, and the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we've got a bunch of scriptures, so let's jump into it. And Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the fresh thereof. Instead thereof. And with the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. What we see here is the first anesthesiologist, God, putting a man to sleep, Adam. And a surgery opening up Adam's side, taking one of his ribs. And then it says, closed up the flesh there, uh, closed up the flesh instead thereof. So we have in the Bible, in Genesis, the very chapter that man is made, we have the first surgery, we have the first anesthesiologist, we have the first recovery, we have the first closing of a surgical procedure done by God. And we know that Eve was taken and made from that rib. Now, let's move on, keep your place in Genesis 2, but let's look at Psalms 139 Psalms 139 and the very first thing is when you're going to look at the medical field as a Bible believing born again Christian we must look at the human body as a creation not an evolution we must look to God the Father as our creator, not to monkey men or the Big Bang. So when we're looking at our bodies for illness, for sickness, for whatever is troubling our body, whether it be heart, lungs, kidneys, what have you. Psalms 139.14 I will praise thee. That's God. I will praise God. For I am fearfully, that's the first time that word shows up, fearfully, and only shows up in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 5, and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We are made faithfully, we are made fearfully, we are made wonderfully, we are made marvelously. Isn't the very fact that we need air? water, food, to survive. I'm forgetting. And wouldn't it be quite interesting for evolution to say, okay, here's a mouth and you're going to eat food, but evolution forgot to give you a stomach to digest that food. Or, and I want to be very clean here, but what about, okay, what about having a stomach, but nowhere for the waste to come out of? What if evolution made our nose to smell and it put it at, at our feet or on our behinds? What would we smell then? God know and knew where to put the nose. He knew where to put the fingers. He knew that mankind would need thumbs. Animals don't have thumbs. God knew the function from the teeth of chewing down to the stomach, digesting, and the organs that get rid of the waste. And when you look at the heart, how the heart, I am going to be 51 years old in, in September, or 50 years old right now. For 50 years, my heart has been beating. It has been pumping blood. No one has opened up my chest cavity to change my battery. No one has plugged me into a wall. 
and yet my heart is still pumping faithfully, and there's been no recalls. There's been no malfunction except for blood pressure. Yet the blood, the heart does with the blood and with the oxygen working with lungs. And I can't get too much detail about this. We're going to have to do two or three videos. But we have a marvelously body that has been made by God. Genesis 2, 7. And everything works in unity. I mean, what, what if evolution put my right foot straight and my left foot behind? And yet God knew which way my feet needed to go. What if evolution forgot the knee or the elbow? And yet God knew we needed knees and elbows. He knew we needed skin. Like I said, I can't get too much into it, but let's look at 2.7 of Genesis. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Or dirt. That's the first time dust shows up. That's the first time form showed up. And breathe. That's the first time. Into his nostrils. That's the first time. The breath of life. What if evolution? Okay, here is this this being. We'll call it man. Oh darn! I gave him a nose and lungs. I forgot to give air. And that's not God. And man became a living soul. Man will die. The wages of sin is death. Though not here in chapter 2, but chapter 3. And yet he has that eternalness of him. That, that fearfully, wonderfully, marvelously made body of Genesis 39 has been made in Genesis 2, 7. And it's the Lord God that made man. And not man that made man, calling it evolution. Now, Genesis 25. Let's run to Genesis 25. Can I go to the doctor? Now we've been looking at God. We're going to see God again. And maybe I'm stretching this one. I don't think I am, but you might think so. Genesis 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Here's a woman unable to conceive seed, unable to become pregnant. And Isaac, her husband, ran to the doctor and said, Doctor, help us. No, he didn't. He ran to God. He said, God, I got a problem. What's the problem? My wife, she's barren. I need help. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So God is involved as creator of not only man in general, but God is the creator of life in the womb, of a man and woman, a male and a female. There it is. So before you want to abort that baby, you're aborting something that God. But we're, that's part of our study here. In verse 22, And the children struggled together within her, inside her womb. So I guess they're alive, they're moving around, but that's not our study. He said, if it be so, why am I thus? Why is my belly? Oh, man, what's going on in there? Ooh, I didn't eat nothing, but man, it, it, it's, shoot, there's problems down there. And she went to inquire the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two men are people shall separate from the bowels, from thy bowels inside your stomach. A bowels is not the function of waste. Bowels in the Bible is part of the womb, part of inside the cavity of the stomach. So when you say you have a bowel movement, okay, you can use that, but that's not really a Bible term. The Bible term for that is dung, D-U-N-G. But we're not looking at that. So, Rebecca... By God has become impregnated by with her husband Isaac, who has been entreated by God because she was barren. And now there's just, oh man, there's upset in the womb. My belly is uneased. I'm going to go to Dr. God. And we see the first pregnancy doctor visit. The first gynecological visit in the Bible for a baby. And we see the first ultrasound, and God tells 
Rebecca, without a machine, there are two babies inside your womb. That's the problem, and they're battling each other. Where do you see ultrasound in the Bible? You see it Genesis 25. Where do you see bi uh, surgery in the Bible? Genesis chapter 2. Where do you see anesthesiologists? Genesis chapter 2, and they've been gone. Rebecca has a problem. She went to God, and God said, okay, here's your ultrasound results. You got two babies in that womb, twins. Like, interesting. Leviticus 15. And we can go all around the corner. I'm hoping I'm trying to make this study short and brief that you will get what you need to get and can I go see a doctor? Leviticus 15, 13. And when he that has an issue, and verse 2, speak unto the children of Israel, say unto him, when the, any man has a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue is unclean, and he shall be unclean of his issue, where the flesh run of his of his issue or flesh be stopped from his issue it is unclean he's got a wound in his skin and it's leaking it's running it's bleeding it's pussing all right so you go to the doctor and say doc i got this boil i got this this open sore it's not healing doc i i got this this, this boo boo here and it's not healing i need help do i go to a doctor do i seek god what should I do? Leviticus 15, 13. When, thou, when he that has an issue is cleansed of his issue, he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, he shall be clean. Okay, after your healing, you're to wash your clothes. You're to wash your flesh. You're to get rid of... Hey, hey, there's a thing right now. My wife's in the hospital right now, and she's got... And don't I, I use disease, infection, everything like that. But it's infection. And it can be carried to others. And we gotta put the gallons on and the rubber gloves and when we take off the gloves, we've got to wash our hands in soap and water. We can't use that 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 you know stuff you just wipe on, on your hand. We can't use that. So where did the fact is that mom, my mom Grow up to a little boy, I came injured, got injured, scraped my knee, scraped my elbow, cut my finger, got a fish hook. Mom always said, wash your hands with soap and water. Where did that come from? That came from the Bible. God said, who made our bodies wonderfully and, and fearfully, and it's such a marvel. You got a boo-boo. You got a cut. Wash your hands under running water running water now let me tell you that was not known until 1847 by doctors it took 1847 years on this side of, of the life of jesus christ for doctors to say hey you know what babies are dying men in war are losing their legs there this infection is growing widespread in hospital situations and it was a, among a women giving birth to babies that babies were getting the diseases the mothers were getting the diseases men on the battlefield were getting diseases what's the problem somebody ran to the bible and says running water wash yourself I've had a couple boils in my life, and the thing they tell us, when you got that boil and it gets on your skin, you wash your clothes separately with hot water and paper towels, anything like that you use in bandages, throw them away. You don't recycle. There may be in your body what you're going to seek medical care of God first, like Isaac, of Rebecca first went to God is you got to make sure you don't spread it around cover your cough if you're sick or your children are sick stay home from church stay home from school don't go out and give everybody your virus Leviticus 15 1 now we read speak unto the children of Israel verse 2 what, say unto them when any man has a running issue, it's leaking, out of his flesh, 
Because of his issue, he's unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue. Whether his flesh run from his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. Every bed upon he lieth that he has an issue is unclean, and everything wherein he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the even. And he that sitteth on anything wherein he sat that he had issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the even. Now what is that? Well, that's the Israel, that's the law. But is that not sounding like the doctor's office in the chair? The doctor's office where you sit up on the table and he examines you. And before you go in the doctor's office, the nurse comes in, she pulls that white sheet or she pulls that white paper, rips it off, crumples it up, puts it in the garbage can, and brings a new white sheet of paper on where you're going to sit. You say, what's that, Stalin? Like that's Leviticus 15. We don't want you to sit where a previous patient sat because you, we don't want you to get what they have if they have anything that's in contamination. And I hope doctors at the end of the day or beginning of the day, I hope they have somebody go out there and wipe down those seats in the waiting room because just imagine all the people and all their ailments that are there. It's a proven fact is uh, we've gone as a family to doctors. We've gone to a hospital as a family and we, a couple days later, we're home, we get sick. Hospital and doctor's office are not the cleanest places in the world. And we must think about that before, you know, when we decide, say, hey, should I go to a doctor? We must seek God first, like Isaac and Rebecca. Okay? But then we got to realize, okay, what about the doctor? How clean is he? I went to a doctor's one time. It was for a routine physical. And I sat there, and my wife was there. And we looked on the floor, and there was just puddles of blood. Never went back to that guy again. It wasn't clean. So, in chapter 13 and 14, we have an issue of leprosy in the Bible. And you must handle leprosy correctly. And I'm going to go there. We're not going to look at the issue, but I have a note here in that. And it says the Norwegian Leprosy Act. They had a problem with leprosy. They went strict reference and study of Leviticus 13, 14 and followed the biblical principles of leprosy to the exact. And the leper count of Norwegian area dropped from 2,858 to 69. So God who's made this body God who knows how this body gets infected after Genesis chapter 3. God who knows, hey, i got to put you to sleep before I cut you open. And God who knows after I cut you open, i got to close it up. God who knows, hey, okay, I know why your wife's not pregnant. Here, I made her pregnant. Oh, what's going on inside your womb? Got it. Let me show you the ultrasound results. You got a disease, you got a, a, a problem, you got a boo-boo, you got gushing, you got gooey. You got to wash yourself in running water. You got to be aware that that doctor you're going to, his facilities, the hospital facility, they may not be clean. And we have the Norwegian area saying, let's do what the Bible says, what God says about leprosy. And look how much it dropped. I read that to tell you. But God knows what he's doing. 2 Kings 1. 2 Kings 1. 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Azariah fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber. And was in Samaria, and he was sick. And he sent messengers, said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, that's the Lord of the Flies, if there's any God that's not clean, if there's any animal on this planet that's not clean, it's flies. They're filthy. So go to the Lord of the flies, the God of Ekron, 
whether I shall recover the disease. So, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah Tishvai, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art going up, but thou shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. So what's this? This guy falls through a ladder, falls through a window or some kind of wooden uh, pretty man. And he gets sick, and he's in his bed, and he says, Hey, I want you to go to the Catholic God. I want you to go to the Church of Christ God. I want you to go get a faith healer. I want you to go to anybody but God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my people. And God sends a man to the messengers of Azai and says, Hey, you want to go to that? You want to go to evolution? You're not going to get well. You're going to die. So, like Isaac and Rebecca, when we have an illness, we must run to the God of the Bible, not other gods, G-O-D-S. We don't run to Esther of Easter. We don't run to Tammuz of Christmas. We don't run to, you know, the, the, the healing and the powers of diet of Mary Baker Eddy and, and the Seventh-day Adventists and all that. We run to the God of the Bible and not religion. And the unsaved get sick. And the unsaved who seek after their gods get sick. And yet God's in control. So, Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16. 16, 12. Second Chronicles 16, 12. Excuse me. How would you? Remember his marvelous works. Does that sound familiar? Uh, that's First Chronicles 16, 12. First Chronicles 16, 12. Remember his marvelous works. That's a good one. But let me get to where I'm supposed to be. Oops. That was good. I like that one. Second Chronicles, that's the Lord Muslim made me go there. <coughs> oh, forgive me for allergies. All right, Second Chronicles 16, 12. I'm in the right place. Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, unto his disease was exceedingly great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physician. And this will be you, you know, you don't go to the doctor. In a moment, we're going to rebuke that. But what the Holy Spirit has told us is Asa, with his diseased feet, with how much his feet were killing him, he never sought God. He went to every doctor, but to God. And it made it worse. Remember Isaac and Rebecca? Who did they turn to? They turned to God. And God answered. Remember the previous king that we just read about, Azahiah? He went to a false god. God says, I'm done with you. Asa doesn't go to any god or God. Fine. Go take care of it by man, and man can't help you. Job 13, 4. Job 13, 4. Now, we're not going to do it because I've got active studies right now, but as a family, when my wife comes back from the hospital and healed, we're going to finish First Chronicles and move back on. Job is a counterpart to suffering and pain and sorrow that you've got miseries, you've got troubles, you've got, you got medical conditions, you've got need to read Job. You want uplifting, you want praise of God, you want it, you got to read the book of Psalms. But the book of Job, the subject is, why do the righteous suffer? And maybe sometime I will do the book of Job when we come to it as a family. But Job chapter 13, verse 4. Look what Job says here. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. 
your quacks. Now, with that statement in hand, let's go to Job chapter 2 real quick. Job chapter 2, verse 11. Who's he talking to? Now, when Job's three friends, those are the ones he called the quacks, and they make it worse. They may be right in some ways philosophically and rigid, religiously, but not about Job himself. The average sinner, the average man who's unsaved, yes. Now, Job's three friends heard of all his evil that come upon him. They came, everyone from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, Zophar the Nemanite, for they had made an appointment to gather to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. All right, this is Dr. Dr. Such's office. May I help you? Yes, I like to make an appointment. Meant. Where did you get an appointment from a doctor? Should I go see a doctor and make an appointment? There it is in the Bible, Job chapter 2. And look who made the appointments with Job 13, 4. The medical people, the doctors that he called quacks, made an appointment with Job, the patient. Back when doctors used to make the house calls instead of you making the office call. So, where did we get the expression quack as a doctor? Job 13, 4, and I've met plenty of them. I've been so tempted with one doctor I got mine right now, bring him a duck and bread. Maybe another one right now, but I'll shut up. Job chapter 12, verse 20. Job chapter 12, verse 20. He removeth God away the speech of of the trusty and taking away the understanding of the age now let me be careful here let me make a statement America has given up on God in general America has forbidden the Bible America has not allowed God and the Bible in Jesus Christ in the public school system not all cases in my talk not all all but there may be some cases there where, where people in their old age who don't remember, don't have no idea who they are, what they are, where they are, what they, when they are. And it may be because of God. For rejecting God. There are medical conditions out there when you reject God, you reject God, and you have nothing to do with God, as we saw in 2 Kings 1. Turn to evolution. Turn to Mary. Turn to... I'm done. You're going to die. Oh, my feet hurt so much. Oh, my feet. Give me another foot doctor. What about God? No, no, no. no. Give me the best foot doctor that this country ever has. Let me do an internet set, search on foot doctors. What about, what about I do a Bible search? Because maybe God, maybe God has given your ailment to see how you would react. How you would react. Now, I'm not going to say all because they may not be all. I'm not saying you have dementia just because God, no. It could be many, 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 many other things. Do not allow me to make a diagnosis. Because I don't know you, I have not studied you, and I have not studied the subject, but I'm saying God is possible to give you that ordeal. Don't leave God out. And if God has given you a medical ailment, are you going to get results when you turn to a man and not God? Think about it. Matthew 9, 12. Matthew 9, 12. Now, when we're talking about Christians, I'm not talking to the unsaved people. As a Christian, you are born again, you are saved, you're going to heaven, glory to God. Would you not value what Jesus Christ said on this subject? If you have a red-lettered Bible, I made my own, but if you do not have a red letter Bible, what we're going to read right now would be the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, who is God and God, who is Jesus, 
said in Matthew chapter 12, uh, Matthew 9, 12, but when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole, you have no problem. I'm trying to think of, Rebecca had a problem. And then Re Rebecca had another problem. Azahiah had a problem. Ahaz had a problem. They that behold need not a physician. See, don't go to a doctor. That's a comma. That's a comma. And Jesus' words began, they that behold need not a physician. Still Jesus' words. But they that are sick. So what did Jesus say? Are you sick? What's the Bible principle? Go to God. I go to God before I go to the doctor. Say, Lord God, I got this ailment. Do I need to see a doctor? Or within a couple days, will it go away? I seek God. And I tie my wife and I. We'll ask each other. Pray, or I got this thing. And then we feel led of God. You know, you got to go to a doctor. This one time I, I, I was in bed. I just didn't do nothing. I was dehydrating myself. I was actually killing myself. I had a vast infection in my body. I had no idea. My wife says that you're going to the hospital. Okay. We've been praying. I know she's been praying. I know my daughter's been praying. Went to the hospital. That was many years ago. Here I am. Teaching about. So Jesus said you are able to get sick. So don't give me the, oh, I never get sick. If you never got sick, you that is a complete blessing. You need to thank God every day that you're well. Really. At the close of the day, at the beginning of the next day, Lord God, thank you, I have not been sick today. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm not saying it can't happen. But if it does, man, you got to thank the Lord for that. You don't have to take any pills. You don't have any troubles. Thank God. I need to praise for somebody who is sick. But Jesus said, when you're sick, go to the doctor. How's that? How about Mark chapter 2, verse 17? Mark 2, 17. And when Jesus heard it, he says unto them, They that are whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick. That's twice. What about follow-ups and checkups? According to that verse right there, you know, if you've got no problems, you don't go to a doctor, so I don't go for a checkup. Yeah, but a checkup with a physician every year could show you you are sick and you don't know it. If you're not sick, you go to the doctor, you see him every year, every, every, twice a year, and he, he gives you all the lab work, and he says, hey, you know what? You're in good health. Thank you, Lord. Doctor says to you, you know, you got high blood pressure, or whatever, many, many, many things he could he could tell you is wrong with you. He say, Lord God, um, he says, I got blood pressure. He says, you know, I got to cut the cell out. You, know, you got to help me, Lord, with that. Uh, he said, you got a prescription, Lord God, help me with the prescription to work and help me to relieve a little more, a little less stress in my life and help me, you know, in these things right here. And Lord God, according to your will, you help me. And we allow this doctor to help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. But I had a man tell me, oh, I never got sick. You're a fool. You're bragging. You ought to be thanking God. Oh, uh, Matthew 5, I mean, excuse me, Mark 5, 26. Mark 5, 26. Man, thank God you're not sick. Thank God you don't have an ailment. Uh, Mark 5, 26. And has suffered many things of many physicians, and has spent all that she had. There was nothing bettered, not like Asa, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in his, it came in the press behind, she touched his garment. And she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall behold. 
And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had healed of that plague. Look at that. Asa. I'm not going to God. I forgot what the king's name is. Chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, Isa, I think it was. I'll go to the wrong God. Spent all their money on doctors. Went to every doc, had every test. And it got worse. She heard about Jesus. And in her faith, she came to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. She had faith to be healed, but she had to have that faith in Jesus. And she had to go to Jesus to be healed. Now, you're not going to touch the hem of Jesus today and be healed. And we've already seen in two places, he said, listen, if you're sick, you got to go to a doctor. This woman went to every doctor and spent all her money. And she didn't get relief till she came to Jesus. You need to go to a doctor? You need medical care? Go. But do not go without God. Do not go without Jesus Christ first. You should say, Doc, yeah, I come in here for this ailment. Oh, I want to tell you, first of all, I've been praying about this. I, I, I've been seeking God about this. And prayer is not working. And the Lord says, hey, listen, I, I'm sick. I need to see a doctor. I want to tell you, doctor, as a testimony, over this thing I have, I'm going to be praying for you. And I'm going to be praying for me. And we get this thing, if possible, if God will allow to get better. What a wonderful testimony to, to, to a doctor and to give your testimony and your case to God and to the doctor. What if, what if the God says, okay, fine, I want that thing to be healed. And it gets healed and it turns that doctor and say, wow, she's got a prayer life and she's got a God that's able to help. I want that. I want that. Asa couldn't witness to his physicians. I went to Dr. Quack and soul, and he didn't do nothing. I went to Quack and Pack, and he couldn't do nothing. Dr. Quacker, what are you going to do for me? Well, don't you have a God? I'm getting him out of the picture. Hey, how's how you doing? Oh, man, it's so it's good. Well, what's your test? I went to the Lord of the Flies. Hey, I got all these flies on me, maggots. Ugh. You're going to die. You're going to die. Luke 5. Luke 5. Now you're getting disgusted. No. If you got an open sore, are you telling me you're going to go to flies to help you? Now, I've heard of leeches, and I've not studied that out. But then a medical... I wouldn't go to flies. You know what flies sit on? As waste of animals or humans? I do know one thing they will not sit on. They will not sit on tobacco spit. Kind of interesting. Why would you put something to your lips if the if a fly would not sit on it with all the stuff he sits on? Think about that. Luke chapter, what did I say? 531. 531. And Jesus answered, okay, this is Jesus. This is his words. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh my sweet Jesus. They that are whole. Need not a physician, but they that are sick. Have you got it? God the Father? Hey, if you're not sick, you don't need a physician unless you're sick. God the Son? Hey, you don't need to go to a doctor if you're, not, if you're well. But if you're not well, you're sick, go to a doctor. God the Holy Spirit? Hey, physicians are for those who are sick. Can a Christian go to a medical professional? What did Jesus say? What the author of the death, burial, and resurrection of a Christian to be saved, the foundation of the church, and he says, hey, if you're sick, go to a doctor. My church says by faith and by healing and by diet, we are all better and that we never get sick. It's all the condition of the mind. You're a fool. You need to get out of that church. You need to get in a Bible-believing church. You need to get what Jesus Christ said, and you need to leave any organization that you're involved with. And again, okay, I don't feel, I, I feel well, I'm wonderful, I'm great, I'm not ever going to a doctor. And yet, if you go for a checkup, you may find out you need a doctor. 
That headache you're getting may be something more than just a headache. That dizzy, queasy feeling you're getting could be diabetes. That's how I first thought. I drove a van, I'd be driving a van, I'd be like, oh, oh, things are spinning. I just don't feel well pulling to the next store, make my deliveries, you know, get a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi, and oh, wow, I, okay, I feel very good. I had no idea I was on the onset of diabetes. Now, I was actually crashing. And had I let it go, and I would have gone into a diabetic coma. I don't know what they call it. So I needed to see a doctor to find out how sick I was. Luke 8, 43. Luke 8, 43. Luke 8, 43. A woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living on physician. Neither could be healed of any. Came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Immediately her issue of blood stains. Stop. We've already read about this woman. Can I tell you who Luke is? Are you willing to find out who Luke is? The writer of the Gospel of Luke? The companion of the Apostle Paul? Luke is a medical doctor. And the medical doctor that wrote the Gospel of Jesus Christ said so that woman spent all her money on people like me in my profession. And people like me and in my profession, she wasted her money. She never got well until she came to Jesus. And J Luke wrote that Jesus said, if you, if you are well, you don't need a physician. And if you're sick, you need a physician. That's the doctor right in there. That's the doctor, medical doctor. Colossians 4.14. Colossians 4.14. I'd like you to go for a yearly checkup. And there's nothing wrong? Praise God. Colossians 4.14. Ready? Luke, the beloved physician. There it is. There it is. James 5. James chapter 5. 14. I'm going to tell you right now, James 5, 14 and 15, I've had done twice in my lifetime with my wife, Tracy. I'm going to tell you, oh, uh, miracle. It's a miracle. It's absolutely a miracle. I'm telling you right now, she's still alive. Because of James 5, 14, 15. I'm going to let me tell you right now. Two different pastors, two different churches when it came to James 5, 14 and 15. And one of the churches would take the Bible and the pastor would get up and would change the Bible as he read the Bible, even though it was a King James church. He would take the King James Bible and misquote it to the congregation and that's why we left that church. When you told me I am not getting a mansion according to John 14, I forgot. I don't care what he said. That's it. We were out. We were out. But I'm telling you right now, personal experience. Because I believe God. I don't believe in doctors. I hate doctors. I can't stand them. And if I hate a doctor and he can't prove himself right, I hate you. And I don't mean, hey, I pray for his soul. I mean his advice, I mean his medical criteria, and the, and the faith I got in as a doctor, I hate. Not the man. I pray for the man, I pray for his soul. I go to doctors. I'm going to a doctor today. Diabetes, heart, heart uh, blood pressure, and other issues. I'm going to a doctor. I left one doctor, the one I said was a quack, because I can't. I pray for his soul. I also pray he gets out of the business because I don't think he's doing well. But James 5.14. Is there any sick among you? That's our subject. Are you sick? Let him, the sick, call for the elders of the church. What do you do if you're not a member of a church? Call for the elders of the television broadcast. Call for the elders of the radio station. 
the internet guru. Ain't going to do you good to be sick and have faith in God and not have a church. And let them pray over him, the sick one, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. So God, Jesus Christ, not Beelzebub, not the physician as God and, and, and forgetting God totally like Asa. You got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to be saved. You got to be in a church and your church has to believe on Jesus Christ. Not a diet, not your faith, but what Christ can do. And when we anoint you with oil, when they, they pray over you, that you truly pray and believe that Jesus is able to heal you when you are sick. So you got to believe you, you are able to get sick. I met people, oh, we don't get sick. The prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And he that commits sin, they shall be forgiven him. You may have to, and this, I mean, listen. Oh, pastor, I got a sliver of my finger. Can we get the church together? No. The first case with my wife, she was on life support with the, with the breathing machine. The second case with my wife, she was on the breathing machine, assistant living, but it did not look like she was going to come off it, ever. You have been put into a hospital, very serious medical happening. And as serious as it is, before we run to the doctors and do everything we need, bring in my pastor, bring in the elders of my church, Let's put our faith in prayers in Jesus. And it doesn't help, I mean, it doesn't hurt, excuse me, it does not hurt to have people in your church that you are and people you know across the world, as I know personally with two of my wives, I'm not a Mormon, one died of cancer. When you got the whole world praying for you, my wife Lisa, and, and when she died, and my wife twice with, with Tracy, when we've got people we never visited, we got Christians we never met all over the world. And they're keeping prayer with you. And when, when, when things look down, they're still praying for you. You got to be right with God. Now, I'm not going to say it's complete healing because there are many Christians who have serious consequences of sickness and they didn't get healed and they may have died or they may be still suffering still crying out to God I rather turn to God the Lord Jesus Christ and turn to Beelzebub and I, listen I thank my pastors for doing it but I didn't turn to the pastor as God and the healing capability of his hands and his oil but I knew as far as faith and I knew as far as the Lord, that they, except for changing the Bible, they were right with the Lord. I didn't go about the positions like that woman. I went to God. And the Bible says to do it. It's serious. I'm going to do it. 2 Timothy 4.20. 2 Timothy 4.20. About the healing ministry. Lay hands on people. Paul, right in Timothy. 4.20. Aretas abode in Corinth, but from off of this, have I, Paul, left at Miletum sick? The power of healing in Paul was dying. As a matter of fact, Paul could not heal himself I, I, I believe he lost his neck, I think it is. I think he was beheaded. Couldn't heal himself. Couldn't take care of himself. We spoke with one guy in the hospital. Oh, the healing, watch this video about healing. Uh, yeah. If you got that power of healing, why are you working in a hospital? Why are there beds filled in this hospital? Why is there an ICU unit if the power of healing is for today of laying on hands? How about, the not, how about not the children's hospitals all over the world? And then you blame the people for not having enough faith. No, you're a deceiver. You're wicked. You're vile. 
and you may not get healed and you may die or God may give you a blessing. God may give you glory that, hey, God raised them from their sickness. Uh, Philippians 2. I believe in a God that has the power of healing. I do not believe man has the power of healing. A doctor can give you a prescription. A doctor can give you a band-aid. But it is that body that God fearfully and wonderfully made. And it is God to control the circumstances for you to be healed. And God used a man or a woman, doctor, to help you. The man that is the author of penicillin was a born-again Christian. And he sought God because he saw all the infections. And God got the glory, not him. Many people know penicillin, penicillin. Well, who invented penicillin? I don't know. I'll tell you now, I'll tell you one thing. God knows his name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life for salvation through Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ alone. Philippians 2.26. For he long after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard I mean, because that ye have heard that he was sick for indeed he was sick nigh unto death uh, this verse has been used for me for my wife my wife died I was told she should have died on the, on the breather but God had mercy on him and not on him only but on me also at least I should have sorrows upon sorrow. The faith healer Paul said that that man was sick unto death. It was terminal condition for that man. It wasn't me that laid hands on me. It wasn't my handkerchief. It wasn't my prayer rag. It wasn't my oil. It wasn't me smacking him in the head. It wasn't my coat that got that man out of his sickness. It was the Lord God Almighty that healed that man. And God got the praise. Now, how's that? How's that? 1 Corinthians 11.30. 1 Corinthians 11.30. I believe in healing. I believe God can heal. I believe God may not heal. First Corinthians 11.30. For this cause, many are weak, written to save people. Written to Christians at Corinth. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep death we will die even as born again bible believing christians if the lord tarry we will die because the wages of sin is death and romans 6 23 is written to christians how's that i told that to the faith healer or the man that believed in faith healing i said the bible says the wages of sin is death that was written to christians sir now tell me about your healing and this is the same God, the same Lord Jesus Christ that has got my wife right now today in physical therapy. And, and, and she's doing quite well. And to God be the glory. Thank you for my pastor. Thank you for the deacons of my church that went and did James chapter 5. And we prayed over her and they annoyed her. Thank you very much. Thank you, I had a church where, where I could turn to. Thank you to a church, I got people praying for me. Thank you for the church that has given us food. Thank you for the church that in, in my troubles, in my despair, and in my grief, and in my troubles, I know there have been people praying for me and my wife. Thank you. But I'm sorry, the credit of healing goes to God. I don't think my pastor would get upset at that statement. If I walk in his office, uh, next time I see him say, Pastor, I just want to thank you. I just want to say thank you very much for God healing my wife. I think he would say amen, glory to God. I, I want to thank you for, for, for doing James chapter 5. I want to thank you for the elders for coming out in the church. Thank you very much and thank you for your prayer. I don't think he would get offended that you didn't think I said. No, my pastor wouldn't be like that. We just did what the Bible told us to do. Believe on God. 1 Timothy 5.23 1 Timothy 5, 23. We're running out of time, so we're just going to go till we run out. Oh, okay. Ready? Ready? Ready. I'm not taking no medicine. Medicines of the devil. Paul, the one who healed people. 
through Jesus. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's infirm for thy stomach's sake, and thy often infirmities. Timothy, what's wrong? Oh, my stomach it hurts. My stomach hurts all the time. Oh, I got I got IBS. Oh, it hurts. Paul, what do you suggest? Can I get your prayer rag, Paul, for 1995? Paul? Yes? Did you just tell me take cough syrup? Or liquid medicine, wine? You know, this alcohol cough syrup. Paul said, the one who healed through the Lord Jesus Christ told Timothy, you got a stomach problem? Yes, Paul. Oh, it's so bad. With Luke accompanying Paul. Uh, Luke, yes, Paul? Timothy's got a bad stomach over there. What, what shall we do? What shall I tell him? I'm writing a letter to him. Yeah, tell him to take a little wine. Stop the water. The water's infected him. Okay. So drink no longer water, but use a little wine. That's That's medicine. That's medicine. That's medicine. Uh, Second Timothy chapter four, verse eleven. Second Timothy four eleven. Only Luke is with me. Paul, the healer, turned to the medical doctor Luke that we already seen. He says Timothy's got a problem. I'm writing First Timothy. All right, a little wine. Stop the water. Second Timothy, I want you to, uh, that was Luke that gave you the advice. How's that? G Genesis 20, verse 17. Genesis 20, verse 17. I don't know what, how this thing is going to stop. Uh, second, uh, Genesis 20. I don't want to rush. I mean, we're done. Let's just look at extra verses. We've been done. So Abraham... 2017, prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed the wombs of the house of Abimelech. So God gave them a plague. God gave them an illness. Abraham prayed. God says, okay, I like it. You're better. Exodus 21, 19. Exodus 21, 19. Prayer could be your answer, and not a doctor. I'm not saying do not go to a doctor. We have not said that. Go to God first, then go to a doctor. Uh, Exodus 21, 19. If he rise again and walk abroad on his staff, then shall he be, and then he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time. And he shall cause him to thoroughly heal. There is a time that you may be injured by somebody else. You don't go call a lawyer. You go to God. Then you go to the physicians. And there may be a time of recovery. There may be a time of healing. There may be a time of rehab. There's no mention of going to a lawyer. And it makes me sick when I go into hospital and doctors are, and they got that darn TV up there and call this lawyer if you, you know? Shut up! Shut up! Imagine people in a hospital suffer, have to listen to you trying to get more money. Shut up! I said that. Number 12. That irritates the fire out of me. You, you don't care about their misery. You just want the money. Because I sued in a case. And I didn't get all the money. Numbers 12, 13. Moses cried. This is another verse I've been doing with my wife. And it worked. Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech you. Now God gave her leprosy. And in Moses, here's his sister. She's turning leprous. It's a deadly disease. It's a horrible disease. It's a de disease that causes pain and decay. And God, heal her. Not turning to a doctor. Moses turned to God and God answered him. I'll give you two weeks, I think it is. Seven days. Seven days, I'll give her. And I'll take care of her. I'll take care of her. 
Deuteronomy 28, 27. 